Real Life, Real Music Radio, with your host, Kyle Hutton. Well, hello. Hi. You're both glowing. Is that the right thing to say? I don't know what the right thing to say is. You both look fabulous. It's like if you're Thank pregnant. You. Well, That's yeah, not. I wasn't. I, I knew it was the wrong word, but <laughs> it's what came out. I couldn't <laughs> help it. Are y'all doing okay? Thank you for being here and for letting this be kind of the first musical hang after your honeymoon. Thanks for being here with us. Yeah, thanks for having us. This is awesome. I love yeah. this room. Thank y'all for showing thank up. Thank y'all for coming. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, listen, it's going to be a night full of stories, songs, unsolicited marital advice. And all kinds of fun things, but I, I wonder, and maybe we'll let it be ladies' choice, if you'll just pick a song to kick us off with tonight. I think we should just start off with that one. We're going to start off, we're trying to figure out what, what, uh, what song to play first night or what song to play last, and uh, Caitlin and I figured we met on this song, so we're going to start off the night with this song. And uh, I, I was in the, a studio in Lubbock, Texas called the Amusement Park Studio in uh, February of 2016, and we were recording an album called Humble Folks, and, uh, <laughs> and we were recording this, uh, our first debut album, and I had this song that, uh, by the advice of a good friend, told me, man, that's, uh, you're quite pathetic for writing that one. It wasn't a, it wasn't a duet, it was just really sad, you know, and he's like, you might have a female sing on that song, you know, and kind of lift it up a little. And, it, and whenever he said that, I thought of this girl that I heard on the radio while driving through Fort Worth. Uh, our band was playing Billy Bob's for the first time, and I was driving around, and uh, back when people still listened to the radio, when the radio still worked in my truck. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I heard and back this when you, the whole band fit in your truck, too. Yeah, it was just us, us five uh, in the van and the little trailer my folks had bought me. And... Uh, I remember I heard this girl sing on the radio, and I like the bass player was uh, sleeping, riding shotgun. I was like, "Hey, Johnny, wake up!" He's like, "Who is this?" And he, uh, you know, asked Sh Shazam or Google, whatever the kids use these days, and it said Caitlin Butts. And I was like, "Man, that sounds badass!" <laughs> and that, th that's all I thought of it. And my buddy gave me that advice, you know, months later, and I thought, "Man, Caitlin Butts!" Right whenever he had said that, and so. Uh, through powers that be and everything, uh, which one of those powers was a guy named Dalton Domino, got us connected. <laughs> he put us in a group text and said, hey, Flatland, meet Caitlin. Caitlin, meet Flatland. Y'all guys make beautiful music together. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I met Caitlin. I, I sent her this song on a voice memo, and she drove down to Lubbock, and I met her in the studio, and I never would have imagined, you know, it would have what turned into be a stranger and ended up being my wife, you know? So this is my first time singing it with her as a married man. Yeah. It's called A Life Where We Work Out. Mm 
And you still bite your lip when I look at you in that way You pull off on some more dirt road on the way home Cause we can't wait Cause in a life when we work out Love's hotter than a summer day If life is only ups and downs Maybe you will come on back around And save me from what I've become Cause Lord knows I can't keep losing sleep Dreaming about the life way Life when we work out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Everybody goes home now. Okay, so, all right, since they did that song first, right, I said that uh, part of what we were going to do tonight is we were going to give them uh, some unsolicited marital advice, <laughs> and I want to ask for y'all's help. I think this microphone's about to take off up here, David, and the, and the monitors. Um, okay, we've got this, the, a couple of these cool posters, The Honeymoon's Over, featuring... Cleto Cordero and Caitlin Butts, and they're autographed and all that good stuff. Here's what we're going to do. Tonight, I'm going to randomly, no, I'm not really randomly. I'm going to pick one of you that, like, that I like better than the rest of you. <laughs> and uh, anyone that, that puts either on Facebook or Instagram on our Real Life Real Music page, put a piece of marriage advice for these two. If there's any good ones, I'm going to read them during the show. And then we'll let them give a thumbs up or thumbs down to whether it was good advice. <laughs> and then somebody's going to get a couple of posters. Okay? So if you've got any marital advice for Cleto and Caitlin. Good or bad? Well, you know, whatever. <laughs> Sometimes we learn more from our mistakes than our successes. Right? <laughs> so, I will uh, say my favorite that I've gotten so far um, is from you and your wife, Wesley. Um, they wrote in our card be calm through the other person's storm. And I thought that that was really beautiful because I'm going to have a lot of storms um, coming up. <laughs> yeah. I, feel, I feel like I'm the storm one in the couple. I got some good advice from a buddy that told me, uh, when you're wrong, let her know. And when she's wrong, let it go. <laughs> I was like, yes, sir. <laughs> He's like, I've been married 38 years. I like that one. I That's like good. that one. And, and I do have to say this, since we kicked it off with a, with a duet there, I'm going to default to the lady again, even yeah. though she got to pick that one, okay? Yeah, okay? Because one of the things I want to say that's very interesting, and we're all going to be watching to kind of see how this goes for you, Cleto, is that any woman that can write a song like White River that uh, paints such a dark picture, I, I think you should maybe sleep with one eye open. I think that <laughs> might be one of the pieces of marital advice. Or just Wh don't hurt anyone that I love. Because. That's fair. Well, whenever we were first dating, my folks listened to all of her, like her album, Same Hell, Different Devil, and, you know, I had, like, Come May and Humble Folks and stuff, and they had heard both of them, and she's like, my little sister, my mom would never tell me this, because mom's a sweet person, sweet lady, always gives good advice, you know, wants the best for all of her kids, and my little sister had told me, she's like, yeah, I was talking to mom the other day, and they both... <laughs> We were talking, we were listening to Caitlin's music. Man, we think you're kind of a sissy. We don't know if you're going to make it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> she writes songs like, you know, Same Hell, Different Devil and White River. And we're just like, I don't know. <laughs> like, we like her, but we, we, we don't know if you can hang. <laughs> so, Caitlin, the first time I heard that song was you played it up in the media lounge at Steamboat. And uh, that was the very first time I heard that song. Tell us a little bit about that. And I wonder if you'd play it. The White River? Yeah. Um, so... For a long time, someone was hurting someone that I love very much, and uh, I guess I was just trying to think of ways to like deal with it. Um, 
and my awake brain knows that I should just let time pass and, you know, forgive and forget and, you know, let the world take care of it. But Dream Caitlin is a very different person, and Dream Caitlin wanted to kill this person and did in her dream. And so um, I woke up um, from the dream and I wrote a song about the dream that I had that night. It's called White River. There's a, also, White River is on the way to Lubbock, and it's like the deadest place in the world, and it's like <laughs> the perfect place to drop off a dead body if you want to. <laughs> I got but a lot now of we witnesses. have to find another place because now people will be looking for them. So. Y'all look for me in the White River near Lubbock. <laughs> the last set of taillights drove away into the night. Far away, Coyote cries. 34 revolver reflected in the moonlight. Pointed right between his eyes. And in the paper Monday morning it read That was the night the white river turned red That was the night That the white river turned red Twelve shades of black and Call the memories of my youth. She tried to shield me from the pain. But on her cheek and in her vacant eyes, I saw the proof. You were the king in all your terrain. Well, 20 some odd years has been more than enough. And it's time to pay for what you've done. And looking at you now, you don't seem to be so tough. Staring down the barrel of a gun And in the paper Monday morning it read That was the night the white river turned red That was the night that the white It's a very uncomfortable laugh. <laughs> <laughs> keep your distance, your social distance, sir. Oh man, that's awesome. Okay, so uh, you you alluded to the studio where you guys met, and how many of you did anybody in here catch the thing that Flatland released called the Humble Stream, where they played the whole Humble Folks album? It was Thank a really you. really cool thing. Uh, real Life Real Music, we got to be a part of it on the filming side, and it was really awesome to be there in the studio where you guys first met and recorded that song. And one of my favorite songs ever since I've been following your band is the first track on the Humble <laughs> Folks record. Tell us about One I Want. I wonder yeah. if you play that for us. Yeah, uh, for sure. I, I had 
I uh, wrote that song back when I was going to school. I met the band in, in Lubbock when I was going to Texas Tech and uh, some Raiders. Every, there's Raiders everywhere I go, and I love it. It feels like home. But I, I was going to school there and uh, writing songs in my garage uh, when I wasn't going to class and stuff, and this is one that I had written when I felt I had stumbled upon a, a love. It wasn't a Caitlin, obviously, but uh, I, I, had, I was like, you know, 20... 22 years old, and I just, I felt like, man, this is what, that love emotion, this must be what it feels like. I've never felt this before, and I just, I just want to, I just want to help this person. I just want to do everything, you know? I just felt like uh, on cloud nine, and uh, I, and I know I wrote this song really quickly, and uh, it ended up being the first song on our Humble Folks album, and it's called When I Want, and it goes something just like this. Right. Y'all, uh, Give him a little whistle and a, and a holler. Playing the fiddle, Mr. Wesley Hall. And a band. I mean to say I want you, a girl I mean it. When I say I love you, you're gonna feel it. Each and every day I'll go out of my way, above and beyond. So you don't have to wonder, you're the one I want. I'm gonna write you love songs to show my feelings. I could tell you I'd rather sing it than throw your name in the chorus of a love song story so catchy. Make everybody wanna sing along. So you don't have to wonder. You're the one I want And have all the answers But not take the floor And when it comes to uncertainty I've never been more sure But darling, when it comes to you I never had one doubt You're the face, love, the woman in my dreams. I've been dreaming about you. I want to take you dancing when we get old. Cry because you're happy, how much your love has grown. And I'll kiss you right on the forehead. Say, hey, baby, what's wrong? And you say, nothing, I just love you Cause you never made me wonder Oh, you're the one I want You're the one I want Step it now, yeah. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the marriage advice is already coming in, and it's coming in right. fairly one-sided. It's all for you, Cleta. <laughs> <laughs> Treat her right. Never stop loving, doting, and dating her. Don't be selfish. Listen to her feelings because they're valid. Right, Caitlin? <laughs> Heard that. <laughs> 
and are her truth and absolutely hold value. Okay, we're going to keep uh, uh, checking these out throughout the night. So if you see me on my phone, I'm not texting someone that's not here. I'm, I'm <laughs> checking in on marriage <laughs> advice. Um, okay, so that's pretty good. That's a pretty good one. So Always date, yeah. right? Yeah. I like it. My it wife and I me. have been married. Uh, we figured out that on October the 4th, uh, that was our first date, but we actually met on the fish camp bus at Texas A&M University. <laughs> and here's the dirty little part of the secret. I was a counselor and she was a freshman. And that's completely... You gotta write a song about but, that. Now watch this, but watch this. Our first date was October 4th. So it was way after camp. I was way in the legal <laughs> period. So I waited until we got back like a good Aggie would and then I asked her out. That was... 30 years That's ago. Hot. Wow, congratulations. 30 years ago. And I think if you ask Tara, our marriage advice would be always keep dating with a little bit of a slant. Date other people. I mean, it really tends to help and work. I'm just kidding. Oh wow. It's like, this is totally good advice. This is I'm totally bad. kidding. I will edit that out so she will never see that part <laughs> of, of the show. I'm um, totally good. kidding. Okay, so Caitlin. What do you want to play for us next? I don't know. After that comment, I want to play another murder song. No, ah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, Touché. Okay. Can I play a new song? Oh, I would love it. Yeah, okay, so tell me that. Like, okay, let's talk. Uh, I mean, obviously, we're still working our way out of the pandemic. do si -do's at 75% tonight. Thank you guys for being here. We're glad. We're, we're glad to have a place we can get out our guitars and come play. Um, tell me about what you guys have been doing during the pandemic writing wise because I think both of you have been doing quite a bit well I will say like my favorite part of the quarantine was when we all came together to um, love on Joe Exotic because <laughs> the oh, we were 15 miles away from where Joe Exotic is and so um, I'm right. really happy about that portion of quarantine um, but it was like really rough for a long time and I mean, we were, we moved all of our stuff home from. We have a house, had a house in Nashville and an apartment in Fort Worth. And at the beginning of it, we just like took everything and went home. And so sitting around, not really much to do but write and watch Joe Exotic. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you he's been writing a lot more than I have. Um, She's been planning a wedding for the last six months, and I just. Yeah. I was like, I know how this is supposed to go. I was like, if you need my help, I'm always around. But I know you're going to make the decisions. <laughs> and I'm going to have to figure out, I'm going to have to hustle to make this wedding happen. And uh, <laughs> speaking of Joe Exotic, uh, I got to say a few words at my own wedding. When I w and it totally just came upon me. Uh, and I was like, oh, crap, I was not prepared to say anything. I only had one little thing that I thought of. And it's like she, like she said, we started off... Um, the quarantine with Joe Exotic and in the wise words of Joe Exotic, I raised my glass to everyone and I said, I will never financially recover from this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So it was beautiful. <laughs> really heartfelt. <laughs> really sweet. <laughs> um, but this is a song that I wrote in the sad part of quarantine. <laughs> It's called, What Else Can She Do? She left the country with big city dreams running wild in her mind. Looking for love or adventure or anything else she could find. But her small town pretty didn't play in the city too well. And the life that she thought would be heaven now feels more like hell. There's lots of sad stories and this here's another of big city dreams that got swept down the gutter. And he said, if you leave, don't you ever come back. She burned all the bridges she knew. So she wakes up and puts on her apron, 
What else can she do? She works 12 hour shifts, pouring coffee for strangers. She walks home at night, well aware of the dangers, but too tired to care. She dreams of a life free of sadness or strife, or what it'd be like to be somebody's wife and a table with no empty chairs. So she wakes up and fills up her own coffee cup and wonders if God hears her prayers. There's lots of sad stories and this here's another of big city dreams that God swept down the gutter and he said if So she wakes up and puts on her apron. What else can she do? All right. She serves up the bacon and the money she's making still won't pay the bills. The city is busy and always in motion, but somehow for her time stands still. She wonders if happiness lies in the country back. And she'd like to go back, but she knows good and well that she won't. There's lots of sad stories, and this here's another of big city dreams that got swept down. She wakes up and puts on her apron. What else can she do? So she wakes up and puts on her apron. What else can she do? Thank you. It's been one of my life goals to put bacon in a song, and I did it, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. Mm. Yeah, sad quarantine. Sad. <laughs> it may, well, I was thinking of all, like, the essential workers and the ladies just that have, like, gone off and, like, tried to, like, go to a new city, and, like, everything shuts down, and I don't know. It just made me sad thinking about everyone that still had to get up and go to work and pour coffee and shit. <laughs> <laughs> We're playing a coffee house right you now. I know. It. You, you captured it. Okay, uh, this one's pretty good. Never have a kid during football and hunting season. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. If, if you like football and hunting, it would be interrupted by the kid. Mm. <laughs> said nine months we prior to care. NFL season and hunting. Okay, we'll see if don't. you like this one. Um, <laughs> Try again. We like football for the environment. We don't, I don't care. <laughs> Marriage advice. You can never have too many dogs or kids. I'm going to disagree. I have I'm five and it's almost too many. You have not, five dogs? But not too many. Five kids. Oh, wow. Well, we, Cotto's one of seven. One of seven kids and I'm an only child. You're one of seven? Yes, sir. You're only. I'm okay. an only yep. child. So, like, I have, like, the best life of my life, you know? <laughs> She peaked lives. when you she was eight. You had the best life of all your siblings. I did. We got to go to Disney World like every other year. Yeah. And um, I don't know. Like, he hasn't been to the zoo before. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like you should maybe stop at like I know you're laughing with three. me. It's fine. 
It's really sad. I showed him a video of gorillas, and he was like, wow. <laughs> well, there's a lot of things. Somebody's like. texting right now, date night, take him to the zoo. <laughs> to the zoo. Yeah. yeah. Marriage advice. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so uh, you've been writing a lot. I have, yeah. Uh, since the rug got pulled out from everybody in March, <laughs> uh, our band was like, we just got back from a six-week tour that was like, we started off the year in Steamboat, you know, and Music Fest for Steamboat Springs, Colorado, and then we maybe, we played some shows in Colorado after that, and we had a few days off at home, and then after that, we raced across the southeast with the Randy Rogers band. We got to open up for them, who, Randy, I was telling Kyle this before the show, he's my, he was my first concert I ever went to when I was 17, and it, I was like, oh, yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, well, was, tell I got, them full circle. Tell them about the wedding. Oh, yeah, so and I'm, we're going to jump off on a lot of tangents before the night's over. So let's see if we can get back to what we're talking about. But I was telling Kyle that that being said, you know, through the powers that be, he was on that trip and stuff, you know, I got to talk to him and uh, go to have a tequila with him at the bar and just hang out. and For like you know. five hours. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> it was it like was, eleven in the morning. It was a good time, but we, he was giving me a lot of advice and road wisdom and stuff. And um, he had said, I'll "Do my best Randy Rogers impersonation." He's like, "You like Shiner?" <laughs> yes, sir. I like Shiner very much. You serving beer at your wedding? I'm like, "Yes, sir." And he's like, "Oh, yeah. said it backwards." You serving beer at your wedding? Yes, sir. You like Shiner? <laughs> yes, sir. He's like. I'd like to see if I can have Shiner served at your wedding. I'd like to take care of that for you. I'm like, oh, crap, this is crazy. <laughs> and then a lot of time passes, and you realize, like, man, was he telling the truth, or was, <laughs> was that a dream? Like and so we got, yeah, we got connected oh, again afterwards. Deal, Randy. Anywho, <laughs> that was a cool kind of full circle moment, but I was telling you guys, and, and along, I, I get this from my mother. I can, like, tell a story in 30 seconds, like my dad's way and my mom's way, and I'll tell you, I'll take you to A, B, C, Go back to the... You're doing it right now. Yeah, I'm doing it right now. But anywho, th in that six weeks of time, we saw the southeast, we, or we saw Colorado, we went southeast, Tennessee, Georgia, down to Key West, Florida, went all the way up to Boston. I went to Boston. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. And anywho, it was wild. And we got back home. We got back home. We played one show in Mardi Gras, Texas Mardi Gras in Dallas, and that was the last show we played before the, you know, the plug was pulled out on everybody. And we were all so tired from touring for six weeks, and it was a good time and everything, but you're just like, man, I am so burnt out and tired. And we got back home, and that's what had happened. And, um, yeah, I luckily had got connected with the publisher, and, uh, which is somebody that helps you, like, find songs, write songs, connect you with songwriters. So since March, I've just been writing songs. Uh, on Zoom. Yeah, on Zoom writes with people, which is as awkward as you can make it. One of the, one of the first ones. <laughs> though was Hayes Carl, which is, which is like whenever you haven't met Hayes Carl and to go straight to a Zoom call. Like, yeah, so it was awkward. pretty cool. I'm standing downstairs and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. But yeah, so I got to write with a lot of cool people and I'll play you a new song that I wrote uh, over this time and um, kind of, I played you live for We Work Out. I was thinking a lot while you're out traveling in the road and you miss your family and friends and uh, your significant other. And I was thinking, you know, a life where we work out, something I've written but I was thinking, like, if you spun that on its head and, like, what would life without you be like, you know? And as I was sitting, uh, watching rain come down a clouded window pane, staring at a Denny's, <laughs> like a two-star motel, I'm like, I'm going to start right here. So. <laughs> Since called Life Without You. Life without you would be a Tuesday at the motel By the Denny's on the dingy side of town <laughs> Watching dirty water stream down a clouded window pane While I wash your memory down Hanging out in places where the lonely come together Talk about just where it all went wrong For all the woulda, coulda, shoulda strained together Like the trappings to some sad old country song 
It been a pale fight Long days and lonely nights Just a game I'm bound to lose It just be something I'd get through Life without you Life without you would be turning back to pages That I'd written in my younger days Living on the highway Always doing things my way All talking, nothing to say Floating through the fog in a dream of disillusion I'm Trying to fill my ever-empty cup Not knowing good and well When you're on the road to hell The worst thing you can do is get stuck And it being a pimp fight Long days and lonely nights Just a game I'm bound to lose It'd just be something I'd get through Life without you Life without you would be an empty breath A sea of loneliness A world laid out in black and white and blue and It'd just be something I'd get through Life without you Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, so Caitlin, let's come back over to you and talk to me. Like, like what I love, first off, I, I feel like that this old barn, they, they found this in Kentucky and brought it down here and hmm. rebuilt it on the backside of an old house right off here, or right off 45. And there's certain nights that we're in here doing this show where it just kind of feels like the spirit of the music like perfectly fits the ambiance of the barn. And I know you guys have probably heard comparisons of like, you know, Johnny and June and all that kind of stuff. But I love the fact that, uh, gosh, not only do you sing like traditional country, but that's just who you are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so tell us a little bit, like where does that come from for you? I know the roots run deep in the red dirt music mm -hmm. scene and like the guys like Skinner and Childers and all those guys. Tell yeah. us tell us a little bit about your influences, like what made you sing the way you sing and write the way you write? Well, if I'm being really honest, I didn't know um, about Tom Skinner and Mike McClure and the Great Divide and all these bands that so many people, they've influenced so many people in the red dirt Texas scene. I didn't know about this whole even Texas scene until I got out of college. Okay. And so um, I met, through college, I met, um, I, I went and played a festival called the Gypsy Cafe in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And I got it because I went to college, they were just looking for students to have do acoustic stuff. And I was the only country girl at my rock and roll college that I went to. Right. And so <laughs> they called me. And um, l late after the show, um, my mom gave me the rundown of where I was about to be because I had no clue. Like, my Uncle Mark loved The Great Divide, listened to all these bands, and he's like, you're playing that? And I was like, yeah, is, this, is it a cool one? He's like, yeah, it's, like, really <laughs> awesome. And um, so my mom gave me the rundown of who all was going to be there, what they looked like, and all this stuff. And But I still had no clue that I was, like, in the presence of Red mm. Dirt loyalty. Okay. <laughs> and so um, late after the whole festival was over, I was just making friends, and I was underage, but... 
having fun. Um, we, went, we went to the hotel lobby and were um, playing songs, and um, I just popped down next to Mike McClure not knowing who he was, mm. and um, he was just super friendly, and he was like, hey, why don't you play us something there? He was, and I was like, how about Merle Haggard? And so we started talking, and then um, I added him on Facebook, and um, I, he asked about you know studio time on, on his status. He said, I've got some studio time opened up, and uh, but... So, so that's kind of how he, he and okay. I met. But um, I grew up doing Broadway stuff. So I grew up, I you know, listened to 90s country like my entire life. But I really grew up doing musical theater stuff. But a lot of it, I did I did tap ballet and jazz and all that stuff. And um, but a lot of the songs that I sang or sang and danced to were like Johnny Cash. I did get a tap dance to Get Rhythm. I did a tap dance to um, Let Her Rip by Dixie Chicks yeah. and. Um, and uh, lots of murder songs. Like, loved them growing up, even, even as, like, a little kid. And Goodbye Earl was, like, my jams. So, I mean, a lot of my songwriting influence is kind of, like, really character-based. And I think that that is, you know, based off of me just loving characters growing up and just Kay. loving that. Um, but really, like, I, I really, truly didn't know about the Red Dirt scene until probably about 10 years ago. So, it's not like a big run like I d didn't know I could songwrite till I was like 18 either so and how old are you now am I allowed 27. to 27 27 yes. all yeah. right all right well you've progressed like <laughs> quickly because like everywhere I go whether it's Steamboat Music Fest or all the way over to Key West mm -hmm. like you're g still getting asked to be on these really yeah. cool festivals and, th and even those I don't know about Cleto but I was um, did the, like the open mics and things there and then eventually got asked to play it which was like a huge deal for me because I just loved being watching other artists and absorbing it all but yeah yeah that's cool that's cool that that was the first place that you saw me that's cool yeah it was this, well you know what actually I, I actually think there was one other time I, I think I don't know if you were the, if, if it was you or not but we were involved in a songwriters competition called the Songwriter Serenade, I think was the name Where of at? it. It was in the middle of tech nowhere, Moravia, Texas, or somewhere like that. And it seems like, did, did you remember competing in a songwriter's competition? I did competition? a couple. Okay. I did the Larry Joe Taylor one. I did the Blue Light one. I don't know. Okay, we'll talk amongst ourselves yeah. later. Maybe that, <laughs> that was not a thing. Okay, so, but we're on you right now. <laughs> yeah. So you have to pick a song. Okay. And I'm going to look for more marriage advice while you okay. pick a song. Well, I did kind of a sad one. I'll do a sweet one. Since since you're sitting next to me, I'll do something nice. <laughs> um, but whenever speaking of the Larry Joe Taylor Songwriter Festival, so um, I was competing in it, and Cleto and I were just really good friends at the time. I had just recorded the song, and um, he was like, hey, can I come along and like be your cheerleader for the Larry Joe Taylor songwriter thing? I was like, heck yeah, come on, I don't have any friends. Um, so <laughs> he, he came along with me and uh, after, after I lost the competition, um, we went to this party or we were invited to a party afterwards and they said, hey, you know, come over and bring your guitars and it'll be a lot of fun. And we get there and if you ever host a party for musicians and there's not alcohol there, like, you're in trouble. Like we were playing beer pong with water, and I, I was like, that is, this is the worst. Um, but they were like, here, here's a guitar, dance, monkey, and I was like, we've got to get some beer or something. And so I, kind of stole this bottle of honey wine that I found, um, and <laughs> I, I found it. I was like, hey, let's drink this, and. Um, we passed it back and forth until it was all gone, and I'm starting to like inch closer to him, but he like is not receiving it. He's so oblivious. Being a gentleman. No, like you, <laughs> it just like you're like, hey, we should have our own songwriter competition, like with the word honey wine in it. And uh, I was like, <laughs> yeah, whatever, man. Uh, <laughs> and he was like, the winner has to take the other person out to dinner. And, um, but we were just friends at this point too. And so like three days later, he sends me this like beautiful voice memo and he, with like a little caption underneath, he's like, Hey, don't get, s um, so this song is about like a redheaded girl with turquoise jewelry and it sounds a lot like you. Um, but I don't want it to freak you out. Um, they like, he proposes at the end and I was like, okay, um, cool. No, <laughs> what are we going to do to finish the song, man? I was, like, <laughs> I was like, when you get to the last verse, it gets kind of serious, yeah. but. 
I mean, I'm, you, when you write a song, you just got to finish the song. Is it? <laughs> but I guess I spoke prophetic words over myself, I guess. Anyways, so after he had done that and we started dating about a year later, I wrote this song for him for Valentine's Day. Oh. It's called How Lucky Am I. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, pass the honey wine that cowboy had fifty awful nights. With every drink, I'm scooting closer to your side. Since when am I the one to make all the moves? With you, I feel like I can break all the rules. Well, how lucky am I to be sitting with you? Okay, so uh, how's your wine? It's you good? good? Yeah. Okay, I need you to give this marriage advice a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Okay, do you like it though? This the wine? No, that. The marriage oh. advice? <laughs> the marriage advice. Hand me the bottle. I don't know. I'm just <laughs> kidding. Uh, I do. I, I mean, I think it's good, but you're, you, this, okay. uh, you, you have to give the thumbs up or the thumbs down. If she mentions wine and you don't have wine, stop what you're doing and go get wine. <laughs> I mean, for a few reasons, right? Is that good? You, are you yeah. giving that a thumbs up? I'm giving that a thumbs yeah. up. Okay, where is Nono Jones 54? Heck and yeah. it, but this is her husband. <laughs> this was her husband gave that advice. So uh, there you go. you're gonna get a post. I love that. He's not wrong. <laughs> One more. One more time. If she mentions wine and you don't have wine, stop what you're doing and go get wine. <laughs> That's, you guys are, yeah. some of you are really creative, and some of you, uh, you need a marriage counselor. 
<laughs> we can hook you up. Uh, no, that's great. Are y'all doing okay? Are y'all having a good time tonight? Is everybody okay? Okay. So, Cleto, listen, we've been talking a lot. We've been playing new stuff. Play one of the big old hits, you know, that they came to hear tonight. The hits. The Play hits. Hit. No pressure. Play a hit. <laughs> what do y'all want to hear out there? Stomping grounds. Well, I, I, I'm going to play that. I'm going to play, I'm, I want to play Stomping Grounds here in a sec, but I, f I feel like, should I just play a uh, Honey One, you know? That, that's, that's my, uh, that's the prequel to How Lucky Am I? And I'm also going to write a sequel to that song. It's going to be called Very, You're Very Lucky. first honey wine well i got big plans to put some shoes on your feet take the turquoise off of your hand train it out for a diamond ring as you kiss under a cottonwood tree i get down on one knee see honey wine go do something crazy, gonna marry me, yeah. You're the sweetest thing that I've ever known when the beer runs out and the whiskey's gone. Honey, wine, you're all I need, hey. Honey, wine, you're all I need. Honey, wine, you're the one for me. Very much. Thank you. All right. Well, I want to uh, just very quickly. You know, I told you guys we've been doing this this show for 13 years now, and you don't uh, in show business keep things going for 13 years without the support of amazing musical community, and that's you guys. And then also all of our corporate sponsors, of course, the, the, the folks at do, do that have created such an amazing place for songs to be heard. But tonight we've got some representatives with us from Chicago Title. They're our sponsors this season. Y'all give a big round of applause. I got some guests back here. Thank you guys for everything you do to help make nights like tonight possible and the radio broadcast possible. Okay. So in 2015, you released the record Same Hell, Different Devil. Yes. Pick another song off of that collection of songs um, and play it for us. So. Oh, can I do it? No. Yeah, 
can't do whatever you want. I'm just, um, just don't hurt me. Well, before I met Cleto, I um, had an interesting range of men that I dated, and um, <laughs> they were really bad. They were really dumb, and they were really <laughs> fun sometimes, but they also sucked sometimes. <laughs> um, but the one that was like the real fireworks finale of them all was the guy, the truck driver, that left me for a stripper. Um, that one really took the cake, um, which triggered this song called Same Hell, Different Devil. It goes like this. <laughs> she said I'd leave him if I could. There was something better, you know I would. But they're all the same, they all resemble. The same hell, different devil. He said, I promise I'm not like the rest. So I put his tire words to the test. Mm, once again, I'm left resentful. And I'm in the same hell, different devil. And now he says his hands are tied. It's like his mind. So I was talking to uh, Jason Eady the other day, and he said that somehow he was going to take some credit for you guys meeting, I, I don't know, or maybe the, the romantic hookup or whatever after you guys had already met. I, I how does he fit into this story? I'm surprised it wasn't Courtney that told you that. No, he it was, to I was talking to Jason, and, and uh, <laughs> I don't remember how it came up. But he, he Well, that same honey one night. Um, we we were staying at Jason and Courtney's house, okay. and granted, we were still friends at the time. Um, so, but we had to share a bed, and so <laughs> Cleto sleeps on top of the covers, fully clothed, like this, with his boots on. I'm like, dude, it's I wasn't fine. looking to show her my goodies the first night, yeah. <laughs> I was like, hey, man, <laughs> I was like, I'm in a band, like, I, like, we, I can sleep in the same room and in the same bed with other guys, and it's fine, and he was like, okay, um, but I'm keeping my pants on, <laughs> I was like, okay, <laughs> I was trying to, like, you know, not be, you know, you'd be like, yeah, was, you're like, was we're two strangers a, forced to sleep in the same bed, I don't it was want definitely a full-size bed, too, so it was yeah. not small, <laughs> but so that was Courtney and Jason's bed, and um, I woke, in the middle of the night, there was a tornado in Stephenville, and I woke up to Cleto clinging on to me, <laughs> like a little 
animal. I don't know if that's <laughs> correct. Or not. I remember uh, being the other way. So around. that was at Courtney and Jason's house. So. All right, gotcha. Well, yeah. that's a different story than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Okay, so Jason Eady showed up at the studio when we were in Lubbock doing yep. the Humble Folk stream, right? The Humble stream. Am I saying that right? Humble stream, Humble yeah. Stream. Um, and he helped you out on a song that I love of yours called Coyote. Yeah. Okay. Can you play that one for us? Tell us about it and play it. Yeah, sure. I don't mind playing that one. Uh, this was one. Is, it's absolutely a true story minus the part about it actually happening. But I tell people that this is 100% true story that I made up when I, I, I skipped class one day. And my buddy, my best friend uh, growing up, I met him in high school and we decided to, we all chase this dream. We we're gonna go to Lubbock and go to college, man, get away from our folks and, you know, accomplish our dreams. And then here I am, I find myself getting real drunk with Roy <laughs> on, a, on a Wednesday night. We all got real drunk and I used to wear this little hat, not this one exactly, but, uh, you know, when you start drinking, people just start taking hats off your head and pictures start getting taken, all the stuff. And next thing you know, as I, I check my phone the next day after a night of South Plains drinking, if you will. If you if you ever been to Lubbock and you don't know what's going on, you there's not much going on, but sometimes there's, you know, nothing to do. So, you know, I check my phone the next day and I see this picture of Roy with radiator with aviator sunglasses and my little how my cowboy hat on. I was like, dude, you look like a coyote. You look like you actually, and I'm not making light of human trafficking by any means, you know, but I was like, you look like that could be your job. <laughs> and I was like, I don't, I don't think I'm going to go to management class today. It's a blow off class anyways. It sucks. <laughs> it, not if, if any of you are management professors, I totally apologize. But, <laughs> but I was like, this class is, you know. So I stayed, I didn't go to class that day and I wrote this song. And uh, when Roy came back, from class, I said, hey man, ch <laughs> check this out, man. <laughs> and I would have never imagined that William, William Clark Green would have recorded on this song, but I learned a lot of things about moving away from my hometown and, and chasing a dream, and, and I learned that, you know, sometimes it's a, uh, my mom had told me faith without works is dead, and ask and you receive and stuff, and I called Will Green one day, and I was like, I could totally hear his voice on this song. Like I, I can hear it in my brain. He's done like Ringling Road and he's got a song called Dead or in Jail where he, he sings about the trash is gone sour. <laughs> Only Will can sing a lyric, the trash is gone sour. <laughs> I was like, this song's dirty like Will, man. <laughs> so I called William Clark Green on uh, Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, I think it was like in 2016. I called him previously before, but yeah, he was there that day that I met you. But uh, I said, hey man, I got this song, it's right up your alley, yada, yada, yada. It's dirty like you are, all this stuff. And uh, he's like, yeah, Clutto, that sounds good to me, man. Like, he's like, sounds good, I'm in. I was like, sweet, this is crazy. I just talked to William Clark Green. <laughs> this is the true story of Roy Johnson, the coyote. I made up. Well, I spend all day sitting in the shade, waiting in my pickup truck. Not too long, a long man and drives by and stops to see what's up. And I had to pull on over and give my eyes a break. Here in busy man, there's nothing to see here, so we sent him on his way. I see his tail lights fading. I grab my glass of tea Truth is my name's Roy Johnson Coyote is my terrain Not five minutes later A mesquite bush starts shaking like it was afraid Fifteen men, women and children Jumped in the back of my Chevrolet Saw them trembling in my rearview mirror They're my aviator shades Said me, I'm on Roy Johnson Coyote is my trade 
You won't hear me coming You won't see my face I cut that trail a thousand times On a thousand trails It's my line of business And it ain't a pretty thing My name is Roy Johnson And Coyote is my dream Did what my mama told me <laughs> Got my four-year degree I'm an expert in logistics But I get product from A to B Well, I don't cut no corners I've always got a plan If you're looking for my services Me go, I'm your man I'll get you across that Rio Welcome to the USA if the had to see the names of Roy Johnson and Coyote is my trade Well, you won't hear me coming You won't see my face I cut that trail a thousand times All without a trace It's my line of business And it ain't a pretty thing my name is Roy Johnson and Coyote is my trade. Hey, 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 hey. Yesterday, I had that Chevy parked right under my usual spot of shade. Not five minutes later, an old mesquite bush starts shaking like it was afraid. Fifteen federal they jumped out, and they all knew my name. But I guess they saw me coming, they saw my face. I cut that trail a thousand times And I guess I left the trace It's my line of business And I ain't ashamed to say My name is Roy Johnson And Coyote is my trade Hey, hey Now we spend all day Sitting in the shade Waiting in my pickup truck Thank you. It's a true story. Absolutely true story. Very nice. All right. Did you guys enjoy Market Junction that opened the show tonight? Weren't they great? I, I want to tell you about a, a show that's coming up. Uh, next week, we've got Mr. Aaron Watson here. And uh, the, the young... The, Young man that's going to open that show uh, for Aaron Watson is here tonight. And uh, we wrote a song last week I want to try to play for you. I haven't played it in public yet, so that's always a little, uh, a little scary for me. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you the secret. I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, the young man's name that will be open in the show is Cannon Brand. Okay? And I thought... Cannon Brand, that's got to be one of the best country singer names that I've ever heard. And you know the old flag, the old flag from Texas that's got the cannon on it that says, come take it? I'm like, can you think of a better t-shirt for Cannon Brand than a t-shirt that says, come take it? I, I don't think you can uh, think of a better one. So we got together. I said, man, we got to write a song called Come Take It. And so... This is what came out. I'm gonna see if I can remember it. Let's see, how did it go? <laughs> I came in here to hide out from my heart. 
It's looking like I'm off to a real good start. The neon smoke and whiskey fog up every memory of a love that I was sure that I'd found but didn't stick around. Somewhere there across a crowded room Like some cliche from some old country tune Yeah, by some chance we share a glance That echoes through my soul But it's only fair for me to let you know That just because I can't take my eyes off you Don't mean that I want to give my heart to somebody new So if you think you're next in line to break it Come and take it But these boots are staying right here where they are. Yeah, and every smile makes it that much harder. I should know by now to turn around and walk out of that door instead of wondering what might be in store what it would be like to twirl you around these hardwood floors just because I can't take my eyes off you don't mean that I want to give my heart to somebody new so if you think you're next in line to break it well come and Yeah, just because I can't take my eyes off you Don't mean that I want to give my heart to somebody new So if you think you're next in line to break it Yeah, honey, if you think you're next in line to break it Come and take it Yeah, baby, come and take it I came in here to hide out from my heart And it's looking like I'm off to a real bad start Thank you very much. Cannon Brand next uh, Wednesday opening for Aaron Watson right here. Have y'all had a good time tonight? Well, we're not done yet. You said you didn't know that song, but then like. Uh, I made it through it. <laughs> I made it through it. You nailed it. Thank you. Thank you. That was that's a lot of fun. And uh, I was telling Cleto earlier. Uh, you know, we, we were talking about whether you ever kind of lose the wonder as a songwriter. I think we were talking to Matt Parrish from Market Junction about this too. Do you ever kind of lose the wonder? And, and uh, for me, like a guy that's been married for 30 years, like I can re-tap into wh what it's like to be like young and in love and at 18 again by co-writing with great artists like Canon. You know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah. Uh, the spark in their eyes. Yeah, you're like, oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> then you go home and your wife's like, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been all night? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's awesome. Who did you yeah, meet? I'm going to stop right there because this <laughs> is going to get me in trouble. Okay, uh, so why don't you pick a song you want to play? I'm going to peruse the interwebs for 
unsolicited marriage advice, at okay. least on y'all's behalf. I asked for it. I and have you're a question, though. It. Yeah. Like, how long are we playing? Because I don't even know. Can we just, like, keep going forever? Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at the owners. Caitlin, the new bride, wants to know if she can play. I think the time frame was forever. Keep playing. I mean, okay. as long as you're having fun. I'm having, I mean, we've got enough wine. We have wine. We have wine. And because of the marriage advice, when we don't have wine, you will mention will wine, and wine. Cleto will go get it. We will get it. <laughs> it's perfect. Okay, play us something. Because what, what? You, you played a new song, I'm going to play one that I might have to read off my phone. It's perfect. Gonna be, it's that new. So, um, I miss the road a lot, which is why I want to play for forever. Um, so I wrote this song called Roadrunner. So that's all that along. that's all that pent up COVID I gotta get out yeah. of, and get back on the road. I like it. I like it. Okay. 
I, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna, I, I think you guys will be right with me on this, on who we're gonna give this next one to, okay? Um, where's Chance Pitts? Chance, where are you? Chance, Chance you're right over there. The oh, there okay, is. Chance is right there with the cowboy hat on. He's getting married. He didn't go woo, he went. <laughs> that's, I'll tell you what. I that's I'll Montgomery what. County hospitality right there. <laughs> My fiance and I get married in 17 days, and our first dance will be to a life where we work out. So I can't think of a better couple that should get this, so I'm going to pass this back to you. Cheers, man. That's awesome. Congrats, y'all. All right. <laughs> So where are we going now? What are we going to do next? This what? has been this has been fun. I told you it would go by fast. It does I mean go like by we're fast. But we'll we'll play. I'll keep playing. I'll keep playing. Y'all are the ones with the drive. I have to be in I have to be in uh I have to be in Freeport to go fishing tomorrow morning at 5:30. So oh. we've got we have until then. All right, that's fair. I'm good. <laughs> Can it? Oh man. I'm I'll try to play all those for the nights over, really. Uh, I want to play you this song because uh, th this song, like Kyle was saying earlier, I have six other brothers and sisters because back in, after 1982, between 1982 and uh, something like 96, there wasn't a thing such as 5G internet on your phone. So my parents decided to have a lot of kids and uh, uh, I, I was think meditating upon that the other day and just kind of thinking like, like literally, my I went I would go visit my dad when I was going to school at Tech, and he would show me around his closet and show me like his old jeans and stuff. And I'm not gonna wear them. <laughs> if you want to borrow them, you want to wear them, you can. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. So I put on these freaking Wranglers from '82, and just inherit these new powers. I'm just like, oh, I feel like I got this dad energy. It feels like you can mow the lawn now. <laughs> awesome. I just got this dad swag going on right now, and I just feel it in my. And so, yeah. So, anyway, I was just thinking about that the other day and um, kind of growing up, like, my, my dad, um, we, were, we were raised Catholic. I kind of, like, you know, read the Bible and stuff now, do my own thing. But, uh, you know, growing up, our folks practiced Lent, and my dad would turn the TVs off for Lent for 40 days and 40 nights. And, and I got a guitar for my 14th birthday, or 14th Christmas, and... Uh, I remember I had nothing else to do, so me and my dad would like watch VHS tapes. For those of y'all that don't know what VHS tapes, you're too young to be here. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to be a nice guy and let you know what they are. They're just a gigantic piece of technology that's recorded on tape. And we would, we would uh, you know, Ralph Paul's lessons on VHS, and I would just sit there with my dad. And I think we're getting good at this, Dad. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I remember just kind of getting a guitar and falling in love with it, and my dad kind of helped me do that, and here I am years later, and he's giving me his pair of pants. I don't know if this is like a ceremony or coming of age, <laughs> but I was thinking about it, and I was like, man, my folks are cool, man, and they, they're freaking, they're just old school. They just are, you know, and they got married in 1982, and they, the only car they ever bought brand new, literally, uh, before they had seven kids, which are expensive, was a 82 GMC pickup, but for the sake of this song, it's a Chevrolet. But, and they go to town still on Sundays and go get water and take out the trash and stuff. And that 82 GMC Chevrolet <laughs> still uh, cruising down the road much like their love, their old school kind of love. <laughs> Down an ostrich boot and dark wash Levi's, rebound wayfarers on bloodshot eyes. I dress like my daddy did, circa 1982. I make old school look brand new. I 
raised on George Strait Island, Jackson and Pat Green. I had a pig from a VHS and mama taught me how to sing. We sit out on the front porch where the crickets and coyotes sing a harmony. <laughs> And we make old school sound brand new. Cause tried and true, I ain't leaving soon. I'll go in that style. Dance around in your cowboy boots with swagger and a smile. But some call it classic. Even old fashioned, and others call it cool. I call it old school. Well, how about you? Well, how about you? How about you, Woodland? Pops love still running like they're 82 Chevrolet GMC. And one you know they bought brand new on their wedding day. They still drive around town with the windows down. Cause they're more in love the day they said I do. It's true. Cause they make old school feel brand new. They celebrated 38 years in August. Right? He's tried and true, ain't leaving soon. I'll go in that style. Dance around in the old pearl snaps with swagger and a smile. And some call it classic, even old fashioned. And others call it cool. I call it old school. Will I have at you? Call it old school. Well, how about you? Thank you so much. Oh God! Hey. All right, let's let's have a meet. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. I'm good with that. Perfect. That works great. All right. Have y'all had fun? Yeah. <laughs> Thank y'all. Unashamed plug. I think there's some tickets left to Josh Abbott. He'll be here in a few weeks to talk with us here. So uh, you can get with your server. You can get tickets to that show. I think Aaron Watson sold out. Uh, I'll be here swapping songs with Randy Rogers on November 17th. Thank you very much. You can come hang out with us. Uh, so anyway, we got a great uh, lineup of shows coming up in the next 30 days or so. So come see us again. But we're not done yet. Caitlin, what do you want to play? So speaking of Josh Abbott, um, so he's like super weird. Um, love him to death. Super weird. So we have this, um, <laughs> love him. Um, we have this songwriter text message group where um, it's a group of our friends like Josh Abbott, Charlie Stout, Jamie Lynn Wilson, Courtney, and... <laughs> Um, lots of our friends, uh, Will Green's in it, but he's never turned in a song. Um, <laughs> but at the beginning of the week, one person in the group gets to choose a topic that we all write around, and uh, then at the end of the week, we all turn in our songs to a Dropbox, and lots of songs that you guys have heard before have ended up being something on someone's album, but this day, Josh Abbott was the uh, determiner of the topic, and um, he chose Ladyfinger Cactus, and I was like, mm, no. Um, I'm going to cheat, <laughs> and I'm going to do a song with around the world cactus. So I wrote this song called Wild Juanita's Cactus Juice. <laughs> yeah. Very characteristic. Out in the middle of BFE, somewhere south, the rule route three is a side of something legendary. It's Wild Juanita. 
does roadside stand. And a lean-to shack by an old garage with a fruit stand out front for camouflage. And you might think it's just a mirage, but I'll tell you firsthand that it isn't. There are buckets of plums, the shells full of jelly, and canned fruit salsa to put in your belly. But the best kept secret is not the produce, it's wild Juanita's cactus juice. A wild Juanita's cactus juice got you all feeling all loose and goosey. Make enemies call a truce. It'll make you feel good, but you don't have to fear it. Enlivens your body, your mind, and spirit. A wild Juanita's up a fresh new batch homegrown organic from the paddle patch with a little bit of this and a lot of bit of that she's never written down the recipe Juanita's no shaman with the rattle stick no floral waters to sprinkle you with Juanita's just an old recluse but by golly she'll sell you her cactus juice a wild Juanita's cactus juice got you all feeling all loose and goosey It'll make you see things that you never saw. It might even make you like your mother-in-law. It just might save the world. Okay, so I, I wanted to ask this, uh, this, this question earlier, and y'all, you don't necessarily have to play it, or maybe you've already played it, okay? But let me ask you this. Um, if people only got to hear one song that your husband has written, which one would you pick? Like, okay. If they only got to hear, if somebody only got to hear one oh, song. Oh, like my favorite song. Yeah, that he's written, which one would you pick? Um... I'm like blank, blacking out. Um, Look, I, don't, I, don't, I don't listen to his music. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? He said you don't listen yeah. to his music. <laughs> no, that's not true. Um, I like Devil Off My Back. I mean, like, yeah. That's my favorite one. Making Wesley go to work over here, yeah. I see. Hey, did we ever get a proper introduction? Over yeah, there? I gave him a little shout out earlier. All right, all right. Shout out to Wesley Hall and the fiddle, y'all. Oh. Command she Texas. Making us sound better than we are. Working hard all night. <laughs> Wes Wesley. All right, so what do you think? You want to play that one? I could try to play that one acoustic. We could play it like bluegrass I style. Or... All right. You can do it. Think like we did a flat broke style? Man. Leave it to Caitlin to just put us on the spot in any situation, <laughs> off the stage, on the stage. It's a uh, gotta look. You know that part off of the Mean Girls when the Amy Poehler's like, oh, you should keep me young. <laughs> <laughs> I did that to her the other day, and she's like, "Who, who did I? Get, who am I married to?" <laughs> this is a song about. beating the devil or whenever he's trying to climb on your back this one's called devil off my back
I woke up this morning some time around 3 a.m. Dripping wet, beads of sweat and rolling down my skin. Lately, I can't sleep, got it on my mind. Running on empty, oh Lord, I'm running dry. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Sometimes temptation is just too much to bear. It's just too much whiskey and girls with long red hair. I know I should pay my tab, I should call a cab on home. I bet I hate to sleep very long. And I hear them coming and trying to take my soul away. I'm making deals with the devil now, it's time to play. I keep on running, I pray my heart don't turn back. I can't shake that devil off my back. And I'll fight the good fight until the very end. I'm gonna climb that mountain with all of my flatland friends. And when I get to the top, I'll turn around and yell, I didn't go back to hell. Coming, trying to take my soul away. I'm making names with the devil now. It's time to play. I keep on running. Free my heart, don't turn to black. I can't shake that devil. Megan is on the Shake that devil. <laughs> Our drummer keeps time like this. <laughs> Off my. You set the bar, my friend. She put us to work. You decide how hard we want to work. I hear them come and try to take my soul away. Thank you so much, Mr. Wesley Hall. <laughs> Thank you very much. Man, 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 man. Thank y'all so much for being here tonight. Let's do, can we, y'all do one more each? I know we're way over yeah, time, sure. but if you guys yeah, would each do perfect. another one. Have y'all had a good time tonight? All right. Thank you very much. Thank y'all so much. 
do si do thank you for everything you do, for letting people that write their own songs have a place to come play them. Chicago Title, thank you for helping us make this season of Real Life Real Music possible. And thank all you guys for coming out tonight. What do you want to play for us, Caitlin? So, um, for quarantine, I just realized, like, in the middle of it, I'd written this song a few years ago, um, but I wanted to play this for the women that, you know, were kind of stuck at home with not-so-great guys and um, that wanted to leave but couldn't. Um, I feel like there's a lot of women that, you know, we don't know that it's going through something. And all the kids that have to stay home with crazy people, too. Um, so I wrote this song called It Won't Always Be This Way a long time ago and when I was going through some stuff and my family was and, um, you know, we just kind of kept getting clotheslined by life and by the time we kind of start getting traction and we'd be like, hey, we're going to be okay and by that time we'd be starting to be okay, um, we'd kind of get clotheslined again and, you know, we'd try to be positive, say it won't always be this way, things will get better and better and um, for a long time it didn't and it was really hard to... Uh, see the light at the end of the tunnel. And so that phrase, it won't always be this way, kind of became this sad thing that I started saying. Um, and so I wrote this song about wanting to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but not really, not yet. So it's called, It Won't Always Be This Way. Ooh. <laughs> Speak of the devil and he walks It's like his ears burn when I talk Pushed in a gutter, stuck in a rut Waiting for the next turn of the knife in my gut Just trying to do whatever Somehow make myself feel better But I guess I got you to think Broken like the bottle that you drank But it won't always be this way It won't always be this way Don't know how many times I'll say I'm drowning in a dream With a breath of air just out of my reach And I'm kicking as hard as I can God, I wish you were a better man But it won't always be this way you cry my little one and don't talk about what your daddy done like a bird will fly away someday and I promise I'll plan our getaway but it won't always be this way
great song. Thank great you so song. much. Wow. For all my ladies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just want to say on behalf of my, myself and everybody else in the audience tonight, thank you guys for making your first gig after tying the knot. Happy right here with us. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Honestly, it's been beautiful. Being here tonight. I can't think of anywhere better, honestly. Honestly, seriously. Yeah, yeah we're, uh, I was kind of having this feeling while she was playing that song. And like, I'm glad you said that. You know, like, I was she had this, like, feeling of gratitude to to be here to play with in front of a bunch of people. It's a strange time that we're all going through. And um, I don't know. I just feel like it's pretty awesome. Within two weeks of us getting yeah. married, we got to play to a bunch of people, and they're y'all. You know, thank y'all for listening to the songs. I mean, that's kind of. What's oh, kept uh, us going? Yeah, honestly, I really mean that. It's uh, it's cool. I was I just had this feeling of like, man, before I met you, even like, I was playing songs in my bedroom, and then through that, it literally led me right to you, <laughs> and then here, led us all here today, and we're all listening to music, and I just want to say I'm grateful too play for each and every one of y'all and I know that there was requests made tonight and I won't get to play all of them but I got I think we got one more song right yeah you close us out cool well, I, I usually we usually close this uh the Flatland show out with this song most nights uh, just because it always kind of brings me back to uh my home and I was raised in a place called Midland Texas out in West Texas <laughs> and uh it's not much to look out but the the folks out there are really good people and uh I, I got to know a lot of good of a lot of good folks out there, and uh, whenever you there's nothing to do, you kind of find yourself at your buddy's house after you graduate from one of the two high schools and the you know the one that Tim McGraw uh, played football at, or that was a a very poor Friday Night Lights reference, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, anywho, but when football season's over. And then you graduate from high school, you're like, well, what am I supposed to do? So you go over to your buddy's house, and hmm, not much going on here. You go look for a shovel. You dig, you, someone brings beer over. And if you're lucky, it's good stuff, like Shiner or something. It's not Keystone Light or nothing, you know. <laughs> Hold on. I'm just saying, what I'm saying is that at the time, when you're 18, 19 years old, and you get and you get your hands on something like a craft beer, you're like, what is this? <laughs> and so, you know, you enjoy it and you're like, Oh, I'm drinking a nice beer, fancy beer. And so anywho, you go it doesn't matter. This whole invol this song involves digging a hole in the ground with a shovel. So anywho, I'm digging a hole in the ground with a shovel and we light a fire on the bottom of the hole, and next thing you know we're passing around guitars and we're having a good time. And then we're like we end up at the place we hoped we'd never go to ever again, which was the local place in town where you'd run into gals from high school and guys that used to push you into lockers. Sorry, I just pushed here. Uh, but uh, you run into My those folks there. <laughs> you run into those folks and uh, you're like, what am I doing here? And you end up dancing. And it's the best and worst part about your hometown. And this song is about all the good, the bad, and the ugly of your own hometown and your stomping grounds. And <laughs> This is a West Texas Saturday afternoon. I'm tired of breathing it in all this softest air. I need to get back home and feel that sand in my hair. And when the sun goes down, I'll come back around. And if you want to find me in that old town, I'll be out in the backyard with the porch light on, sipping on a shiner. All my friends in the background passing around a guitar. Open up on fire, drink the night away While that radio plays some old Charlie Daniels song Oh, you can find me there 
And this damn bar still smells the same like Keystone Light. I still feel like the same damn creatures who will never change. And when the sun goes down, I'll come back around. And if you wanna find me in my hometown, I'll be at the dance hall with the bar lights on, I'll sipping on a shiner, old flame in the background staring me down. You know I don't mind her drinking the night away While oh, that DJ plays some old Waylon Jennings song Oh, you can find me there You can find me there And someday I'll move on And when I do put on your damn boots Dance on my headstone Bring a bottle of Tennessee for two Well, I'll be pushing up daisies just for you. Yeah, yeah. And you can find me there. You can find me there. You can find me there. I ain't going nowhere. When the sun goes down, I'll come back around. And you and I will be two stripping in our old stomping ground. Our old stomping ground. Our old stomping ground. Yeah. Get on down one last time, Wesley Hall, come on. Thank y'all so much for listening. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Caitlin Butts, Cleto Cordero. Thank you guys for being here tonight. We'll see you next time. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much.